In part one of this video series, we cover what logs and flows are, what's the basics of a sim, how it, uh, it performs some correlation. We talk in part two about the rules and the logic for logs and flows, and also talk about UBA and machine learning. Now we are going to be talking about threat intelligence. We are going to be also covering in this last video also the topic of searches and reports. And again, these are very introductory parts. And then we are going to close this video by speaking about how to automate tedious chores. I mean, Q, Q reader SIEMs are, are great for doing stuff, but what happens when you are have to do many repetitive things all the time? How can those be uh, automated for you? So let's get started with uh, threading tails. The most important concept in threading tails, uh, if you are new to this, and I assume that that's the case because you're watching this video, is to understand the concept of IOC, of indicator of compromise. And these are basically three things, IP addresses, of known bad actors. So let's say there is an IP address that sends spam or, or is known to distribute malware or, or ransomware, etc. The other type of IOCs that we're going to be covering here are URLs. People click on links and get infected and get in all sorts of troubles. Those URLs that are, that are malicious uh, are, are considered IOCs. And the final one are hashes. And a hash is nothing more than a unique number of a file, of a component, of executable, whatever is the piece uh, that makes it extremely unique so you can actually identify, well, when I, whenever I see this hash, I know it is this particular type of malware or this particular Word document or this, you know, whatever you actually produce, you can compute a hash for it. And several components in QReader are uh, not only compute those, but also all these three IOCs can be extracted from these logs when they are actually scanned and actually and also the flows, right? So now, what can you do with this information? Well, many rules in QReader, when we were talking about the rules, uh, using their logic, where, for example, when this IP that I'm looking in this particular log that I'm receiving now is in a table of uh, uh, phishing uh, uh, IPs. Well, how does those IP gets into those tables? And by the way, a table in QReader is called a reference set. Okay, so if you hear me talking about that, that, that is the same concept. It's just a table. It can be one, one, uh, two-dimensional table, three-dimensional tables, n-dimensional tables. Uh, but uh, so if I'm, if I have a table that contains bad IPs, uh, that is one that can be used on a, on one of these rules. I can also have, for example, the IPs that uh, a particular user normally logs in from. Well, that can be a two-dimensional table in which the user ID is the key and then the the entries, uh, the IPs that he goes are, are, are found on that table. Again, multiple tables that can be used in the logic of the rules to work with that. But again, how do I get those things to be populated with the right data? So those uh, IOCs can get into QReader by virtue of what is called a stick and taxi connection, and, and that's a standard format uh, for producing in, in, in and transferring information about IOCs, but in QReader, there is an easier way. A threat Intelligence App is a mechanism that allows you to not only get into tables particular IOCs, for example, if you are looking for a particular type of uh, ransomware campaign, you can just type the name here and actually uh, get to, to find that uh, that stuff, you're looking for the country ransomware, and you can actually get the information about that. And there are, you know, very many. But you also have the capability not only to import that data and put it in your table, but also automatically by the click of a button, of a button execute a search in your curator system and say, all those IOCs that are in that collection, 
look into my logs and flows and see if you see indication that they had been present. It's actually a big time saver there. So if you're interested in more on that, again in the same PDF that I referenced in part two of this video series, uh, you can find a link to a video that goes into more detail and shows you how that works. Now, speaking of searches, in QReader, both in the actual logs or the flows, you can search for whatever you want. You don't have to do it, but let's say that you have an offense that fire and, and all of a sudden you want to see who else might be doing this or whatever is it that you are trying to in search for. There are multiple ways in QReader to perform searches at different levels. And again, if, I, if you go into this PDF and look for searches, I created a series, a whole series, on that topic. They are also found in multiple places. Searching in Curator. This is the one. Okay. As you can see, this can go from the very basic to the very advanced to find the needle in the haystack should you want to do that manually. Now, in terms of reports, reports in Curator. Uh, can be done with an application called Pulse. Again, the, here are the videos of it. I want to give you a flavor of uh, what uh, Pulse dashboard looks like. And this is a free app that you can download to get your report. But basically, this is all about performing a particular search and showing the results of the search in a nice looking GUI with fields that I can update and say, well, go in the last you know, 24 hours. And, um, and perform not only the search but bring me the results in this good looking uh, dashboard mechanism. And finally, how do we automate chores? Let me actually explain by what I mean by that. If I get an offense that fires and I'm investigating it, uh, and this is the, on the way on the new UI and this is the way on the traditional UI, uh, again, for those that are downloading the free Curator CE, I'm going to do it from this uh, interface. Uh, you will need to, when you get the offense that fire, you understand the rules that fire, that's all, all, all is good. But you will have to go into the actual event probably and understand what those logs are and where they fire on the offense. So, for example, uh, these are a proxy that indicates that somebody went to a site that they're not supposed to be going to. This is an EDR type of thing in which it's find a hash. Remember that we talk about IOCs and hashes. And typically what people do in standard SIM is actually grab these, go to virus total, do paste, and begin to answer questions on who's behind these. What, are we a target of choice, target of opportunity? Uh, what organizations is behind? How can we better protect against that? And it, it, what you have the capability is to use artificial intelligence. In this particular case, is Watson working with uh, with Curator, Watson Advisor, in which it, it performs an automatic analysis of all those IOCs that are in my offense. Let me actually bring this and take a little bit of information out because there's too much info in here. These are those 10 events that we saw before in gray, but also already in we have in red the stuff that is malicious, the stuff that is bad. I don't have to do copy-paste. The tool did it for me in a graphic way, show me what is here, and if you have interest in knowing what is it, why is this malicious, you can actually click on any one of those and see, well, what are the things that advisor used to come to that conclusion? You see, I, I beat Defender, Acronis, McAfee, the X Force, uh, you know, all these sources, and you can learn more about it, right? Uh, but again, it saves you a tremendous amount of time uh, by just doing that. But also, one thing that is very unique of this, but when you apply AI in here, is that advisor knows about the relationship, kind of the Facebook of the bad guys. I know who shares code with who, who works with these, which URLs are seen in this and that attack. And it's quite aware of that. Something that is not previous to your instance, because um, there's way too much information on that, right? And it actually brings this blue stuff that is not part of the IOCs that were in, in your system. But these are things that have a relationship to it. 
and you don't have to find those things manually which will take a tremendous amount of uh, knowledge and time the tool actually tells you which organizations are here you know? it looks like uh, behind these ones are the Chinese right uh, the, this uh, thread group and you can click in there and see the details of that as well uh, but uh, most importantly it actually let me bring this green information out it actually performs a search automatically you can do this manually but you don't have to the tool does it for you and actually goes and dig in all your logs and flows and finds out that there are other offenses in your system that have a relationship with this particular one again in, in a matter of minutes you can actually understand all this information and save a tremendous uh, amount of time and that's what I meant to say by uh, automating chores and this is called advisor in the case of the curator SIM so uh, I'm going to conclude this uh, short videos of the three series video on what's an SIM I hope that this has given you an understanding of what this technology is and remember that there's that there's the PDF in which you can go into more detail about uh, every one of these uh, components